Welcome back, Le Bon Vie connoisseurs, and welcome to this month's theme, looking at the cooperative and learning about how they operate, what they represent, and what styles of wine we can expect. From my experience, there's sometime a negative reaction from people when you mention the words cooperative and champagne. There's often an association with poor quality, mass-produced, sometimes dull champagnes, as opposed to wines with character and with charm. And perhaps in some cases this may be true, as there are to date some 67 cooperatives operating in Champagne that are selling a multitude of different cuvées every year. This can be bewildering and a little bit confusing and off-putting to the average consumer. So it's our job here at Le Bon Vie to assess the best of those brands and outline which cooperatives we should be looking for. And of course we've done just that. And based on our research, there are a small number of really great cooperatives that sell quality champagnes here in Australia. There are a number of different classifications of champagne houses which outline how they operate in terms of their purchasing and production. In this feature, we look specifically at the CM, more commonly known as the cooperative. This is the grouping of a small number of growers together. Which brings me to our first producer, Palmer and Co. Our first champagne house was founded in 1947 by a group of seven growers in the town of Avise. At first they called themselves the Society de Grand Cru de la Champagne because at that time only growers that owned Grand Cru vineyards could join this cooperative. Between them they had Grand Cru vineyards in the areas with the Cote de Blanc and also the Montagne de Reims and they banded together as they were seeking to make better cuvées than they could achieve individually. So how did the current name of Palmer & Co come about? Well, this is an interesting story and through our research, we discovered some facts about its origin. The story goes that a very famous biscuit company called Huntley & Palmer, based in Berkshire in the UK, had inspired the name. These were biscuit makers to the royal family and received a royal warrant by Napoleon III. Apparently, as many imports were restricted during the war back in the 1940s, the people of Reims, the Remois, as they were referred to, were prepared to pay more for a packet of biscuits than they were prepared to pay for a bottle of champagne, and this inspired the house. So in 1959, Champagne Farmer moved to a bigger facility in Rams. Today, they, had, they have over 200 growers, covering 415 hectares of land, 200 hectares of which are Grand Cru and Premier Cru, and they have an impressive 18 metres of depth and three kilometres long of cellars. The current director, Remy Vervier, and he has decided to change the membership rules to allow more growers into the group. This wasn't a disregard for quality, but more of an understanding that not all of the great vineyards in Champagne are strictly classified Premier or Grand Cru class. This is an intelligent and masterful choice by Mr. Vervier, and it is our understanding that this, it's this type of thinking that has led this house to become one of the best cooperatives in Champagne. The champagne that we feature this month is the Brut Reserve from Palmer & Co. It's only distributed in Brisbane at this point, but we certainly have distributed it nationwide to our champagne members this month. We have in the cuvee 50% Chardonnay, with a portion of that Chardonnay coming from the Cote de Cezanne, where our champagne tour will be spending quite some time in the coming weeks. We also have 40% Pinot Noir and the balance being 10% Meunier. We have a quality ageing period of a minimum of four years on the wine and we have 30% addition of reserve wines from a Solera ageing system where we have wines going into the blend which are up to 20 years in age, adding some oomph and adding some power to the cuvee. Now I tasted this wine uniquely with our club manager Kiri. So we always taste separately, we never compare notes and we both noted identical characteristics on the cuvee. Firstly, lemon curd patisserie and toasty notes coming from this extended aging. This is classic champagne. It has perfect acidity. It has great structure. It's a very well-made champagne and will suit many a champagne lover. We were very impressed by our first cuvee delivered by Palmer and Co. Our second producer this month, also an impressive producer, is DeVoe. They're located in the Orb in the south of Champagne. And their story? 
Well, they were founded in 1846 by brothers August and Jules Devoe. The history of the house reads a little like a murder mystery with three very talented women who went on to run the family winery, all inadvertently becoming widows and then taking on the successive ownership of the Maison. The house at one stage was called Veuve de Vaux or the Widow de Vaux. It wasn't until the last widow named Husseneau died in 1951 at the very ripe age of 80. Of course, champagne is very good for your health. She handed the business over to her sons and as they had no heirs, the brothers decided to hand over the reins of the house to someone that they trusted wholeheartedly, a man by the name of Laurent Gillet, who is the president of the Aubois, the Union Aubois. They're now called the Group Vinicol Champagne de Vaux. The Maison looks after a group of growers with some 1,400 hectares of vines under management, and that is a group of around 800 growers. The chef de caves, Michel Parisot, who only chooses the fruit uh, from the Devo wines from about 100 of these hectares. Michel has been at the helm of the winemaking team for more than two decades and has been making pr great progress in refer refining not only the cuvées but the brand of the house. The house is very innovative but also has a very strict management program for its growers to adhere to. It's called the D-selection and provides us with the name of this unique cuvée that we are sending to you for this month. The D for Devaux is fermented in oak barrels, but also the still reserve wines being blended into the cuvee to, pre to create the premium non-vintage cuvee are also aged and stored in large oak foudres. The reserve wine at Devaux are aged in a perpetual Solera system, which includes every vintage from the magnificent 2002 vintage all the way through to 2011 and accounts for about 40% of the, of the reserves uh, in the wine. Now, you can get an inkling from this information that we're going to see a cuvee with some power. There is a focus on both Pinot Noir and Oak within the Maison, in direct comparison to the Parma and Co, who prefer the freshness of the Chardonnay. Although both wines that we're sending to you this month have exactly 8 grams dosage, so similar in that front. The De for Devaux is 60% Cote de Bar sauce Pinot Noir in the blend, with the balance being Chardonnay and no Pinot Meunier at all. It spent a very generous five years in the cellar aging on lees in addition to the very rich addition of the Solera Age Reserve wines at 40% of the volume. This is a premium cuvee for the house. I served this wine a little too cold in the glass. It needed both temperature and time before it really showed off its true character. The wine is big, it's luscious, and it's all about this red fruit coming from the south of Champagne. It has a lovely big bold mouth feel and it exudes spice, richness and warm. This is the perfect winter champagne and I would partner this with a hearty dish of lamb. It's fair to say that these wines represent great value. The level of quality, the persistence of flavour and the character shine through on both of these cuvées. I hope you enjoy both the cuvées that we've delivered to your door this month. We certainly enjoy hunting them out for you. Cooperatives represent a very important part of the ecosystem of production in Champagne. We encourage you not just to enjoy their non-vintage cuvées, but drink right through their ranges. As sometimes the prestige cuvées and the premium cuvées that come out in cooperatives have the very best fruit and are given the very best level of attention. See you on the next episode of Le Bon V TV and bye for now.